inspiration for this short story came from a leaning in a, in a rather large department store one day and seeing a, a lot of ladies looking at some shoes by Jimmy Choo, <laughs> which I thought was quite excruciating actually, but anyway, it's called The New Shoes. She saw them advertised in a ladies magazine, the latest footwear by Freddie Fool. They were the answer to every situation. They were new, completely innovative and smart. If you had a pair of these new shoes, you could do away, do away with your Wellingtons, stiletto heels, hiking boots, sandals, trainers, clogs, slippers. In fact, they replace all ladies' footwear. Never had the world seen anything like this, and it was the product of a very fer fertile mind of Freddie Fool. There was no price mentioned, and she knew they would not be cheap, but she had to have a pair. Whatever the cost, she had to have a pair for Christmas. She showed the advert to her husband, who acknowledged it with usual manly interest, but his apathy did not dent her harder. By hook or my crook, she was going to have a pair. She looked at the advert again. She could not exactly discover just what they actually were from the photograph, which was taken from such an angle as to make it impossible to determine their precise shape. There was only one colour available, but the reader was assured that they would match with absolutely anything and everything, but he did not say what the colour was. Neither did it tell where they were stopped, except, of course, for a couple of high-priced high London stores. Yet they were, already to, they were already an essential to her limited wardrobe, and she was going to have a pair. Saturday afternoon, she spent with her best friend in the town shopping. The two husbands were usually at the match, and they all met up in a local pub for a drink later in the afternoon. This particular Saturday afternoon, the girls, if you could call them that, were in the high street and stopped, as they always did, to examine the window display in Mr. Wrigley's footwear emporium. And there they were, with pride of place in the centre of the window. The two girls looked at the shoes displayed in the window and could not quite make out just exactly what they were looking at. A nice pair, shade of purple, she said. No, no, are you going colour blind in your old age? The bright green. <coughs> Let's go in and look, she said. Well, he could knock me over with a feather dust. I could have sworn they were purple, but the jet black. Now he mentioned it, I was mistaken, but they look bright crimson to me now. It must be some type of special shading that Mr. Wrigley has got on the inside of his shop window. Let's ask him. Nice high heel boots, she said. If only I was 20 years younger. And so my friend agreed, but I find myself having to contradict you. They look just like a pair of very comfortable slippers to me. I think I could wear them forever. The shoes were on a central display just back from the window so that the girls could walk around them. As they paraded round, the shoes appeared to change both appearance and colour. Just then, Mr. Wrigley came into the shop from the storeroom. Now then, ladies, you've never seen anything like these before. They're made by Freddy Fool, and they're absolutely, completely magic. They certainly appear to be magic, said her friend. They change shape and colour to suit your requirement, your mood, your thoughts, your ideas and your desires. Need I go on? But they can't do that, they're just shoes. No, madam, they're not just shoes. They're just Freddy Fool's magic shoes. She ventured to inquire the price. Mr Wrigley was tempted to tell her that she couldn't afford them. But he put his best leering face on and said, Well, you're not going to get much change out of £2,000. They're not for sale. They're just a ploy to drag the inquisitive public into my shop to buy other shoes. Any shoes. You can't, but you can't have them. You can't even touch them. They are very precious. They are not properly street proven yet. We are not sure what happens when you do try to walk in them. Freddy Fool's done some experimentation, but he has not revealed the results. They are very, very hush hush just yet. What size are they? she asked. Just one size, madam, one size fits all. The girls left the shop and met up with their husbands for a drink. The topic of conversation was the magic shoes. The girls were entranced, but the more they talked, the better their better halves were convinced they were both balmy. The thoughts of the shoes would not leave her. She lay in bed thinking about them. She did her housework thinking of them. Her every waking second was focused on the magic shoes. She cooked with them, she washed them, she even ironed them. She had to have them no matter what the cost. There was no way she, she could afford them, but she was going to have them. She set about formulating the plan of action. It was simple. The more she thought about it, the easier it went. She had never knowingly done a criminal act in her life, but there was always the first time. And anyway, these were Freddy Fool's magic shoes. 
She only worked half a day on Tuesdays, and it took her all of her self-control not to burst with excitement before that afternoon. She didn't even stop for lunch. She went to the high street and straight to Mr. Wrigley's footwear emporium. She looked at the display, and the magic shoes were still there. She looked into the shop. There was no one in. She marched quickly into the store, knocked over the first three display stands, showering the floor with shoes, picked up the magic shoes, and legged it before Mr. Wrigley had arrived to see what all the noise was about. See you soon, he said, looking towards the door. He then went about picking up the strewn shoes and tidying his display again, following which he went back in with a smile on his face to finish his lunch. She ran all the way home. She could hardly contain herself. She burst into the living room, sat down, kicked off her own shoes and put on the Freddy Fool magic shoes. They were comf comfortable, almost as if they were not there. They were pink fluff fluffy slippers and she leaned back to relax in them, savouring the moment. After a while she decided to have a walk into the enclosed back garden and when she looked down she was wearing brown trainers, just ready for some exercise. She decided that a walk might be good so she opened the front door and went into the front garden. Suddenly she felt her legs go stiff. She screamed out but could not move. She did. Then she did move, straight out onto the pavement. She looked down. She was wearing <coughs> thigh-length thigh boots over her jeans. She began to goose step towards the town. She could not control her legs and, she'd know, and she had to go where she was taken. The boots marched on relentlessly, straight onto the zebra crossing, causing the van to almost stand on end. They stopped for nothing. She could neither bend her legs nor control her destiny. She was afraid of the consequences, particularly when the boots marched into the police station, straight up to a policeman who was standing with his back to them and kicked him hard on the backside. <laughs> they did a smart 180 degree swivel and exited the police station, heading straight for the high street. The policeman who then ran round and stood in front of him with his arm raised, shouting, Stop in the name of the law, wondered what had happened as he lay flat on his back on the pavement when the Freddy Fool shoes ploughed straight through him and onward to the high street. The door of Mr. Wrigley's footwear emporium was closed when the boots approached. Seconds later it was lying in tatters on the floor, broken glass and shattered timber everywhere. Mr. Wrigley just smiled. You're back, he said. Welcome home. The emergency services arrived in force. The high street was closed down for a while. The five brigade ambulances were not required, as were not the five police cars that surrounded the building. <coughs> The armed police and dock patrols were called off in minutes, leaving just two constables in the shop. It took Mr. Wrigley a long time to convince the police that the Freddy Foo shoes really were magic, and she had time to reflect on her actions before appealing to the local magistrates and spending the week before Christmas sweeping the high street outside Mr. Wrigley's footwear in for him. <laughs>